Welcome to For Formula One's Sake. We're all playing computer games whilst we do this because we hate you all. When you say we all, I, I don't have time to play computer games. No, Look, I don't. If, if Max Verstappen has got time to play, I don't know, Pong during Imola, whatever he was doing, then we can do the same thing. So yeah, he's, he's got nannies for his kids though, hasn't he? And they're not even his kids. Has he got kids? He's got Danny Kvyat's kids. <laughs> what, what, yeah, Danny Kvyat hasn't got time to play Snake, has he? <laughs> or, or he's played that in the past, that's why he's in this... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to For Formula One's Sake. Turning up to the Senna Tribute in your own clothes. It's what there's he would have wanted. <laughs> there's always one, isn't there? <laughs> Welcome to For Formula One's Sake, reveling in the nostalgia of processional races. Make races boring again. I, I found it quite nice just to doze off. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to For Formula One's Sake, the F1 podcast upset that there was no tribute to Rubens Barrichello. Mindfully paint... No, all, all wrong. Welcome to For Formula One's Sake, the F1 podcast upset that there was no tribute to Rubens Barrichello. Oh, fuck my arse, Mindly, mildly, mildly painful, mildly painful Friday crash. M- Rubens Barrichello's. Mi- it's really hard to say. Rubens Barrichello's mildly painful Friday crash. Fuck I'm not even it. reading it. Out. I'm, I'm doing it from memory. Rubens Barrichello's mildly painful Friday crash. Oh, oh we nearly, oh, nearly oh, lost your point oh, there. Welcome to For Formula One's Sake, the F1 podcast. Upset that there was no tribute to Rubens Barrichello's mildly. Fu- Fuck off. <laughs> Welcome to For Formula One's Sake, the podcast F1 deserves. I'm Ollie Peer, and we are back in Europe, the home of F1 with its large runoffs, boredom and murderous circuits. We are here to bring you all the news from the Formula One MSC Cruises Grand Premio del Mad in Italy dell'Emilio Romagna 2024, which took place in the Autodromo Italiana... Who's fucking with me? Autodromo... <laughs> Autodromo... Internazionale Enzo e Dino Ferrari <laughs> and we're out of time but like Max <laughs> Verstappen we'll do a whole podcast and a 24 hour sim race because we just don't give a shit we're also upset that there was no tribute to Ruben Barrichello's mindfully painful fuck off <laughs> joining me is a man who is still without a bathroom it's Phil Tromans how have you had oh. it in that long <laughs> I know it's, it's getting really uncomfortable now does it normally take like a month and a half to do a bathroom? I um, I think it does. I've been watching a lot of Kirsty and Phil's Love It or List It, and uh, I think it can take a long time to make a but bathroom. But like we've got professional people doing the lot of it. It's taking so fucking long. Uh, We're having a whole what? week of nobody being here because they have to make some skirting boards up. Why, oh, is it, why no, does it take should, so long? You can buy skirting boards. Well, that's what I thought. And even if you can't, like it's a piece of wood with a bit of routing in it. Why does it take a week? Also... You didn't. Why didn't you order it when you knew that? Oh, it's just. What type of skirting board? Forever. How old's your house? Twenty years. Okay. What type of skirting board is it? It's just is white it... with a couple of grooves in it. You can sort of see it over my shoulder. Yeah. It's does back. the is the molding an easy to get one, or do you have to? Source no, it from... you do have to get it made because they couldn't find it. But oh, it's but... one piece of wood with two lines wrapped in it. It's not fancy. I know, just, but if the just... supplier has got a queue, you know, and they. I mean, they just need... go to any wood place. They'll have a router. <laughs> Any wood place, any timber supplier with uh, any kind of power tool. Yeah, and then they go, they go. Yeah, we can do it. We've got, we can do it in two weeks because we've got a queue of stuff to do here because you, you, I mean, it and you ordered it late. Even if that was the case, the, the 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 people doing my bathroom have known that I need this skirting board for at least a month. So why do you <laughs> need just skirting so board long. to take a poo? Can't you just have something else? Well, because I don't want just plaster into the floor. <laughs> I want then there's a joining space. I want to see. I want to see you have an argument with your building contractors. Well, uh, well no, because I, I want to see it in front I'm, of. I'm in sort front of, of your tempted, family, but no, because my want, family's all annoyed about it as well. No, but I want. I want you to do it in front of your family, and I want you to say to the the carpenter, "Oi, why don't you just go and get some from that wood place?" And then everyone will just carry on you on their shoulders, going, oh, he told them, <laughs> go to the wood place." <laughs> I'm in this weird position where it's like I feel like I should say something because I don't think six weeks to do a bathroom that I thought would take two weeks is reasonable. But also, I don't want to piss off the contractors. Well, did they say it was going to take They still have to finish weeks. it. No. Well, they kind of indicated that it would, to the point where the insurance company, through whom the contractors have been hired, have been phoning up going, are you happy with the new bathroom? And I was like, it's not done yet. And they're like, oh. Um. But I don't, I don't want to piss off the contractors until they've finished it. 
How, how much? So is it just the skirting boards? I so mean, far, all that's in is the the floor. The, there's no the, the bath is in, and the the tiles are in on the floor and the walls, and that's it. Oh. Do you have a second bathroom. toilet? We do, thankfully. <sighs> Otherwise, it would be challenging. All right, Mister Moneybanks. Uh, that's Two right. toilets. It's the East Wing. Yeah. Ooh, Your Majesty. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Your Majesty, that's what you went with. You were like, all oh, royalty, two toilets. It's just yeah, weird we... that Buckingham Palace only has two toilets, isn't it? I have a poo in one, are we in the other? <laughs> um, and beside him is a man who has his neighbour's parcel. It's Terry Saunders. I feel euphemism? really bad. I f- no, it's not a euphemism. I've been away for the weekend. I just came back and I've forgotten that I picked up a neighbour's parcel like last week. And then I spent a couple of days at my partner's and a whole weekend away. Mm. And I've got a new neighbour who I don't know very well. And he passed a note under my door saying, Hi, Terry, please, can you let me know when you're back? Because I need this parcel. And like, it's been like five days. And I know that I would be livid if yeah. a neighbour kept my parcel for five days. Well, well, maybe like I shouldn't have ordered this parcel to your house then. Yeah. I know, but maybe I shouldn't have accepted it, but I because I knew I was going away. But I don't know. But also, I'm only saying this now because he said he'd come around after he finishes work, so he may knock on the door at any point. <gasps> so you might get my neighbour a new segment, oh, a new yeah. segment. Terry's neighbour with Terry's funny name. neighbour. He's got a gun. He's got a funny <laughs> name, which I. I shouldn't say on the podcast for GPDR things, but maybe only you could beep it out because his name. Yeah, seriously, on. actually, honestly, is. <laughs> <laughs> is it really? Seriously. Oh, my right. God. That, that is pretty funny. Can't be real. <laughs> we can, we can do our own version of it. If we can call him uh, uh, Barry Bazongas. Oh, my God. I'm so paranoid. I'm just because I'm recording in my front room, which is where the front door is. Just imagine if he's about to knock on the door and he can hear me through the door going. Yeah. And his name's... I'd just like take it to piss. <laughs> Then he opens it and he sees that I'm on a laptop recording something. And he's yeah. like, are you We have to beep it out again there, but yeah. About me. You, yeah. Oh, shit. Posting on the internet about my insulin medicine that you've taken delivery of. <laughs> <laughs> Which should have been kept in the fridge, and yet you haven't, and now it's ruined yeah. and I'll probably die. Yeah. I've, I've literally got 15 minutes to live. Thanks, you prick. But you feel good. But with a German accent. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, actually, I think his flat's a bit nicer than mine, so, you know. Oh, fucking loud. <laughs> Uh, Ollie, what's going on with you? Uh, uh, stolen any post? <laughs> no. I haven't stolen it. It's merely resting in my apartment. <laughs> I've never stolen post. I've never had post stolen. No, I've just been. I've I've been enjoying the sunshine. And, it's been nice, um, hasn't it? It's been really nice. And uh, my freckles have come out. Can you see that? I've got yeah, quite a lot of freckles. Hey, what's You're the weather? Really, yeah. What's what's the temperature there? Twenty. Uh, Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Yeah. Quite nice. Huh. What is it in Berlin? Well, it's been 23 today. It's going to be 27 tomorrow. So. Oh, that's too hot. That's, that is too hot, especially in a city. No, no, no. 22 yeah. is about the sweet spot. Sat outside last night having a barbecue. It was lovely. I'm a fair-haired man. I can't deal with anything over 22. It's too much. I melt. I need to wear a sombrero. But I've been enjoying you the sun. You do need to wear a sombrero. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've been saying this for years, even in the winter. At all times. Should be that, your thing. That's the song, isn't it? That wear yeah. sombrero. <laughs> Is it? Oh no, the song, sunscreen. The song that we all know. <laughs> oh yeah, Baz Luhrmann's favourite, fav- famous hit, Don't Sombrero. F- <laughs> if I could give you one piece of advice, it would be to wear a sombrero. Wear a sombrero. <laughs> well, now I want to hear that song. <laughs> I'm sure with AI we can make that happen. Yeah. But trust me, on the sombrero. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd listen to that. That's great. <laughs> Ah, Don't take news. other people's sombreros oh, unless they're sombreroing with you. <laughs> think that wasn't worth it. <laughs> Everybody's free. Anyway, what? <clears throat> that's a different um, song. No, it's the same song. Week. Let's move this on. News. Charles Leclerc changed his race engineer this weekend, which everyone says is totally normal and fine. Xavi Marcos, who has been the voice of the ear of... Le- no. Oh, God. No. <laughs> Voice of the ear. I've got this image of a talking ear. It is Xavi, isn't it? Yeah. Xavi Marcos, who has been the voice in the ear of Leclerc since he was at Sauber in 2019, is gone, replaced instead by former performance engineer Brian Bozzi. What's all this then? Don't know. <laughs> well, it's just a bit weird because they're all like Charlie Clerk has been saying 
oh, you know, it wasn't my decision, it was the team's decision. And it's like, well, sure, because the race engineer driver relationship is very important. So, you know, you don't, you don't just turn up to work one day and be like, oh, we're changing your race engineer, because that's a big thing. But also, they have been getting a bit shitty with each other. So there are rumours that maybe Charles Leclerc has said to Freddie Vassal. I him dead. Yeah, he said, I want him out of here. And then the best thing is they've kind of promoted him to a job that doesn't really exist, which is the telltale well, side. Have they actually said what his job would be? Because I, I admit I haven't delved into this in great detail, but a quick Google just said he'd gone somewhere else at Ferrari. Yeah, they basically went, you go over there. We've got a great job for you. Uh, yeah, but that wall, you need to look at that wall and make sure everything's all right. A, a <laughs> showroom in Chiswick. Do not look at Charles. <laughs> do not make eye contact with him. Yeah, but he hasn't, he hasn't asked... Again. He hasn't asked for you to be fired, but yeah, if you speak to him again, we will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, Brian Bozzi's in. Good old Italian name, Brian. No, it is definitely Bozzi. It's Brian Bozzi. Bozzi. Bozzi? Yeah, let's say Bozzi. Australian. No, just Bozzi, Bozzi sounds better. Sounds a bit like Terry's neighbour. <laughs> <laughs> Whose name we can't the, repeat. We can't repeat purposes. it. But it's got, it just sounds a bit like that. But I would say, if I was a racing driver... And I had an engineer called Brian Bozzi. Every time he came on the radio, I'd want to say his full name, which I think could lose like a tenth a lap. Brian Bozzi. Hello, Brian Bozzi. I keep hearing I Brian. I keep hearing Brian Boitano, which is the uh, former US Olympic ice skater for some reason. Or Brian Blessed. That would be good. He hasn't got a radio. <laughs> He'd just definitely shouting. crash. Box, he's box, just, box. He hasn't got a radio. He's just shouting from the pit lane. <laughs> Gordon's alive! <laughs> Verstappen pits! <laughs> Do whatever Verstappen doesn't! <laughs> That's one of your Can best say- impressions. That was very good. That's Thank your, you. Yeah, by far your best impression. Yeah. And also, can I just say, that is my favourite Formula 1 thing, which is when they say, do whatever the driver in front doesn't do. I don't know why that tickles me every time they say that. It's like, well, whatever he does, don't do it. You're like, oh, because I think I'd panic. And if I saw him go into the pits, I'd be like, oh, shit, what does that mean? Do, do I go? Do I not go? Ah. He just said, fastest lap, what do I do? <laughs> he didn't crash, what do I do? His wife. <laughs> Should I marry his wife? <laughs> I'll raise his children. <laughs> And that's the Max Verstappen story. Uh, yeah, Does it really d- matter any of this, honestly? I mean, well, Ferrari haven't been known in recent years for their superb communications with the drivers. Is that fair mm. to say? Yes. And is it fair to lay that at uh, Xavi Marcos's door? I think. I, I think, think probably. Yeah, I think it's more to do with Leclerc is bricking himself because Hamilton's coming in next year and... He's making sweeping changes. Have you ever done something where someone someone new starts in your office and they start asking questions and they're just like, well, why why, is, why don't you put... Why is the the milk not in the same places where you make the tea? And you're like, oh, it's just always been that way. Are you just saying, like, oh. because fuck you, that's why. Yeah, yeah, because actually yeah. this is how we do things here. It's, like, well, it's not fucking Williams, mate. And yeah. <laughs> I just I just think he's, he's cleaning hands. Why isn't the milk in the ice cave? <laughs> Well, if you want the milk, you have to load the spreadsheet. <laughs> C colon milk run. They definitely <laughs> log their fridge temperatures, don't they? They uh, definitely do that. Just in a book. Yeah, in a book on the side. But that's not the Ferrari legends. way anymore. No. Good. We've so had, what we're saying is we we've have had no this idea ledger since 1984. <laughs> Speaking of Ferrari, there are two new big signings that have been swiped from Mercedes. Jerome de Ambrosio, uh, he of Marussia and Lotus in the early 2010s, and Loic Serra are both headed for Maranello from Brackley. De Ambrosia? <laughs> de Ambrosio. <laughs> that, is, that is literally the, the custard. De Ambrosio is going to be deputy team principal and head the Ferrari F1 Driver Academy, while Sarah will be the head of chassis performance engineering. Brats leaving a sinking Mercedes ship? Uh, uh, it's difficult not to look at it that way, I would say. Because D'Ambrosio has basically been like... Toto Wolf's right hand man because Toto wants I wanted a decidedly average driver that everybody has forgotten about and they got Jer- had, Jerome D'Ambrosio in I had no idea about this that he was there and he's been there for a bit because he, he I think he basically is doing the same job at Ferrari as he was doing at um, 
at Mercedes, as far as I can tell. Because I think he was involved with the Mercedes Young Driver thing as well. And he oh, was basically no. picked up. Do you, do, you reckon he's actually, do you reckon he's actually Lewis Hamilton? Do you think Jerome D'Ambrosio is actually Lewis Hamilton? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, Lewis Hamilton is an actor who's been hired to play the role. And every time he gets in the car, it's actually Jerome D'Ambrosio, which is why he's had to go to Ferrari. Cause he's what, actually no, and Lewis nobody Hamilton. would buy the story that actually one of the greatest drivers of all time is Jerome D'Ambrosio. Yeah. But he's too deep into the story to reveal it. Exactly. Well, be, why, would uh, a, why would a custard be... Or rice pudding? <laughs> do you know what? I do remember you know saying I, that at the time. Do you know what I miss? It's just reminding me of one of the things I miss from the UK. It's rice pudding. Yeah, Surely the Germans have stodgy desserts like that, don't they? They have quark. Yes. Quark? What, what the, is that? Because I saw that in the It's not a graphic design programme. It's yoghurt, it was, yoghurt stuff, it's it? Some, it tastes like yoghurt. I don't know what it actually is. I'm probably eating some... Bits of chicken or something. Is it like well, sticking neck? with the uh, typical uh, theme of this podcast, it's probably cum. <laughs> come. I mean, you're come. Come on, quite... you're bringing the theme of the... Uh, everything's just bringing Terry brings down. it up every week, and I thought I would alleviate him of that <laughs> oh, need. Thanks, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I, I needed that. that. I didn't realise. <laughs> I'm very sorry to the oh. YouTube video. Viewers. I was feeling very tense before, but now... <laughs> thanks to, what, don't drink it, Ollie. Don't drink it. <laughs> <laughs> It's very yellow. Oh. Um, <laughs> God, that's strong. Part custard. Uh, Backed up for weeks, mate. <laughs> I haven't come How did we get to this from talking about staff changes at Mercedes? <laughs> Fuck's sake. Sorry. It's no wonder they're not on the BBC. It's like the six stages of Kevin Bacon, isn't it? It's six degrees of separation. It goes Jerome Brogio, Rice Pudding, Quark, Cum. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and <seven. laughs> And that'll be a new T-shirt in the store next week. <laughs> Uh, yeah, anyway, uh, it's it's hard to look at this and thinking there's a lot of people leaving Mercedes to go somewhere better. Maybe there's a better way of saying it, but it doesn't seem like they're getting... They're both doing, as far as I can tell, very similar jobs to what they were doing at Mercedes just for a better team. So it's not like they've taken several steps up, unless they have. Okay, my big question on this is, is Toto Wolf going to do that thing that drivers do when their career is over but they don't realise and they just kind of pool around for years it's getting progressively worse I or, don't know I can't see him doing that he does seem to have lost a bit of his bit of his magic though is mm. it just me maybe I'm just being harsh because no I know, don't uh, he seemed very works. he seemed very authoritative is that the word and yeah. very confident yeah. now, and assertive so and now he's just a bit like oh no what's happened to him he looks a bit like I sound a bit like Arnold yeah. <laughs> Yeah, whereas before he had this sort of slightly sexy, you know, I'm going to beat you and I know what I'm doing. and But now he doesn't. A little, little window into Wally's, uh, <laughs> into his mind there. But he did, didn't he? He was just... Uh, but now he's, he's <laughs> I'm not, going to beat you and I know what I'm doing. He's going to stop talking before I dig a hole <laughs> that I can't get out of. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably a kink, isn't it? Shall I move this Being on? in a hole that you can't get out of? Have you got any more to say on this? Uh, <laughs> not really. I don't know what's going on. But no. it's interesting, probably. Adrian Newsy. Nice. The next destination of everyone's favourite yacht-loving aero savant has been revealed, unless it hasn't. On the one hand, the Daily Mail says Adrian Newey is off to Ferrari alongside Lewis Hamilton, but on the other hand, the Daily Mail is very regularly full of shit and racism. So we take that with a pinch of salt. Also, in recent days, Eddie Jordan, Newey's manager, seemingly dropped a clanger when mentioning Zach in the context of a future contract, which everyone immediately took to mean that Newey was off to McLaren. So is he? The McLaren thing would be a bit left field, I feel, because A, he's been there already. B, McLaren are doing quite well, so would they want to upset the apple cart even if it was with Adrian Newey? C, I have a theory. Oh, you have a C. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I don't really have a C. I was just filling space. Oh. Well, you're right. McLaren are doing well, but they've started doing particularly well in the last few races, right? So what if he... Oh, no, what the fuck not, was that? That's going to be normal. Was that your doorbell? Stop saying his name. Wait, yeah, stop saying back. it. I'm going to beat that That's out. It's the most German doorbell I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, <it's>, uh, <laughs> was it insulin? Uh, he didn't say. He, he told me exactly where he'd been the last five days, which was interesting. So, I've oh, been outside sorry. your door waiting for you to come back. Why did, did you ask him where he'd been for the last five days? Yeah. <laughs> just told no, you. <laughs> no, I just kind of said, oh, sorry, I was away at the weekend. And he was like, yeah, I was working. And then I was it. I was like, I, 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 I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, my theory was, what if 
you know, he's just having a little chat on the side and said, ooh, why don't you just do this to your car? And then they're just going faster. I mean, it's a thought. And then he's like, because they're like, show us what you can do. Come on, with our car. <laughs> this just is give us one little interview, thing. is it? Yeah, exactly. Give us one little thing. And then... Well, he's, uh, he's, well, we'll like we've talked about in previous episodes, he's got that bit of tape that he took off the Red Bull and he's tape. just stuck it on the McLaren. Exactly. And you sign me and I'll show you how to put it on properly and then you'll go really fast. Mm. Um, I mean, I can't, I can't see it, but... And Eddie Jordan is... I mean, in fairness, Eddie Jordan does have a very good finger on the pulse, but he also talks quite a lot of shit quite a lot of the time. So I, I'd be surprised if he goes to McLaren. But weirder things have happened. On the other hand, the Daily Mail thing about Ferrari seems like... I mean, that's what we've been talking about as the most obvious thing he'll do anyway. But also, I wouldn't trust the Daily Mail as far as I could throw him. So, don't know. I don't think we're any clearer to knowing what's happening. Terry? Yeah, I mean, I don't really understand where he's going. I mean... The Eddie Jordan thing was very weird, and Eddie Jordan is stupid, but... Well, he, he he's not, that's the thing. Like, well, that's it. That's he I mean. kind of is and isn't. <laughs> Do you think like, it's an intentional does talk diversion, then? But, yeah, I mean, he might be he might be dropping... A uh, little bluff. Yeah, I mean, he might be subterfuging. Yeah, but it's so weird. It's so weird just to be like that. It's, it's, yeah, I don't... It it was, and it was sense. such a weird situation as well, because it was like a promo for Oyster Yachts, of which... what. Uh, uh, Weirdly, Adrian Newey is buying one and has been doing a lot of... I presume he got a stonking discount because he's been doing a lot of marketing for them. And this was like a chat on their YouTube channel with Eddie Jordan, who, as a reminder, is his manager for some reason. And they were just talking about bikes or something, like free bikes that you get with contracts with companies. And Eddie basically said, uh, oh, yeah, the bike that they had at Red Bull or whatever it was was shit, so I hope that Zach, I mean, or whoever, gives them a better one. And it was like, that's a weird thing to drop. Mm. if that is yeah. what you're doing. I think the conclusion we can draw from all this is that we have no idea what's going on. We don't know where he's going. We are no further on the next week, but we've just spent a few minutes talking about it. And that's what this podcast is all about. I think he's going to stay at Mes- uh, Red Bull. <laughs> Mercedes. He's going to stay at Mercedes. <laughs> he's been at Mercedes the whole time. <sighs> uh, but, he does, but he does say now that he's going to another team. Have you heard that? He didn't say it was an F1 team, though. Oh fuck! It's just oh my god! It was a sports team. Yes, my Liverpool's just team. their managers just left. What if Adrian New is the new Jurgen Klopp? Well, all the players go out next year with little carbon fibre flicks on their <laughs> boots, <laughs> and every time they kick, the the, the leg goes at two hundred miles an hour. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you make the a most joke. Powerful shots you've ever seen. You make a joke. Do you remember the Adidas Predator? Do you not yes. remember? Them? Yeah, but there you go. That was literally a football boot with little flicks on it. It yeah, didn't yeah. make your foot go faster, but it did make the curl curl on the ball yeah. more pronounced. It'd be like, what was, the, what was the ball they had at the South African World Cup? The Jabulani. Maybe it'll bring in something that makes all balls act like a Jabulani. Or they just go, a Vuvuzela. That's, that's all my football knowledge. <laughs> Integral to the game of football. Well done. Uh, for years now, everyone who knows stuff has said Alex Albon deserves another chance in a big team. Well, everyone except Alex Albon, it seems, because he's just signed a new deal at Williams. What? Yeah, what? <laughs> I think that was my response as well. It's like, you're better than that, Alex. Why are you staying at Williams? I mean, he must have he must have a lot of confidence. And in fact, I think he said he had a lot of confidence in where Williams are going. They've got money. They're not hamstrung by the Williams family situation and the fact that everyone just uses Excel for everything, apparently. And they've got James Vowles in, who seems to know his stuff. Although he has come from... Well, actually, James Vowles left, William, uh, left Mercedes and then Mercedes have gone downhill. So maybe James oh Vowles was a secret. <gasps> maybe that's what Alex Albert knows. So anyway, he's there for at least another couple of years. Um, I mean, And is, he is good enough to be at a better team. So, But is, is he good enough to be at a really good team? Probably but not. Where would know. he be? Because this is the this problem. Is, the, mm. the, the driver market has kind of frozen up a little bit because you've got... You got the Mercedes seat, which they clearly want to give to Antonelli, and if they don't give it to him, they want to yeah, give it to. Yeah, do, do they want to give it to him next year though? They do because they're fucking desperate. This is going to be but the he's end. Not, of the I mean, he's doing all right in F two, but he's not smashing it. Yeah, no, they're, they're, they're just. I think Toto Wolff has got. I think he's in his he's in his end cycle of Formula One because he wants to leave on a high, and he's like, well, the best way to leave on a high is to have a new rising star that I signed, and it's all me, 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 and he's going to bring him into early, and the car's going to be like running seventy. They'll be they'll be Williams next year, and then Red Bull, you know, Albon, I can't see him going back there, and then obviously all the other teams are full up. So where's he going to go? Where's he going to go? I mean, it's a good point. 
I guess he's just like a seat in F1 is better than no seat in F1, I suppose. And maybe there is some future in Williams. There might be. I mean, I, I, it's been so long now. We've had so many false dawns at Williams that I don't want to get my hopes up because I do want them to be good. Because I remember the days when they were really good. And they were my, like you, they were my. I don't really have a team in F1 now, but back in the day, it was Williams, like in the early nineties. I think McLaren is my team still. Yeah, I, I now I don't I don't like any of them, frankly, but. Um, <laughs> But, but yeah, I think a lot. I, I have a soft a spot of, for Williams. Yeah, but I think a lot of British people do. You know, I do. You know, it, I think it must you, be an, it's an age of, thing because you know it's Nigel Mansell. And, yeah, you want them to win, don't you? Or, or at least do well. I'm always egging on Albon, less so Sergeant. But anyway, I'm still sort of like, come on, you know, I want to yeah. see him do well. And it is. It's not just because he's Albon and he seems quite likable. It is because he's in a Williams. I mean, it, it gives them a solid base to build around, doesn't it? it, it you know, they're not just chopping and changing no mark drivers and occasionally a good driver that they know they're going to hang on to for two years before he goes on to another team a la mm. Russell they've got a good driver that knows the team already that they will have input into the car and he's going to be there for a couple of years more and I guess that's good and he's quite experienced now he must have been in F1 for like four years three years four years some years some years while. enough years to you know have a hundred odd races under his belt and mm. know what he's doing so I guess it's good news for Williams. I'm just quite surprised. I don't, I, when I think about it, I probably shouldn't be surprised, but... Never think. That's the trouble. It's, it's not what story. this podcast is about. Well, tell us how wrong we are. You can do so via social media. We're at For F1 Sake on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and still on Facebook if anyone checks it these days. Or you can email us, wrong at ff1s.com. Alternatively, if you think we're right, then why not buy us a beer at The Whinging Moustache? It's a pub, except it's a pub without adverts, and the pub is a podcast. Just to be clear, there is no pub yet but if you want to listen to us without anyone trying to sell you stuff then get on our rebranded apple subscription head to apple podcasts and hit the subscribe button and there's a free seven day trial right now or if you just want to say thanks for whatever the hell it is we do you can donate a one-off pint or three to us at ff1s.com forward slash pint 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 Teams, all we ask is that you show up and wear this T-shirt. It's the teams presented by Stoffel Roffel. Uh, Red Bull, a disastrous weekend for Max Verstappen in which he won the race, just not as easily as he normally does. Oh, and he also won a sim race from his motorhome because, sorry if F1 is too boring for you, Perez provided the light relief. But Verstappen seemed to really have to dig deep to win this race. Might the season be getting good? It it was a weird old weekend this one wasn't it because i thought the race was actually really dull even though it started with all this kind of like quite heavy tragic overtones and it's a nostalgic track and it's actually a good track to drive but my the race was dull except towards the end when nothing actually happened but it did realistically seem like it could mm. and it genuinely seemed like red bull and verstappen i mean not not perez obviously he was nowhere the whole weekend but verstappen was like shit guys shit <laughs> he's getting closer i can't get away from him guys help shit and then when he won he genuinely seemed pleased rather than just like ah oh, yeah i done good good again yeah well done <laughs> this one he's like fuck i won i can't believe it it did um, remind me a bit of you know when in the mercedes dominant era there'd be some races where they'd be like oh well done and like lewis Hamilton would be like oh my god that was a really tough race and for us we'd just be like going yeah, you won again. Great. He's like, oh, but, but I nearly didn't win. <laughs> and that's where we're at. Oh, I nearly got beaten. But this, but this really did seem like it's one of those. It was another classic one. Is like, oh, if it had been another couple of laps longer, where McLaren were finally having to go. And and I, if I recall rightly, and I probably should have done more prep because we're recording this earlier than we normally do. Um, Piastri, uh, Nor Norris wasn't even the best McLaren driver for most of the weekend. Like Piastri qualified further up but got a penalty for something that wasn't his fault mm. in qualifying because he blocked Magnussen which was the team not telling him that Magnussen was coming so Piastri could have been even further up yeah no I think I mean apparently so I I, I, would, I listened to a different podcast that what? knows about things the and fuck? they said that Imola is a very bumpy track which meant they had to bump up the right height really high for all bump the cars bump up the right height bump up, bump up the, the right height bump up, bump up the, the right height dance, dance now and the Red Bull is so good because it goes so low to the ground. So it seems that if they if they have to up their ride height, it fucks everything. 
to the point where they the downside only just, of good aero. Yeah, where they, it fucks everything to the point where they only just win the race. But I guess Perez is the more useful barometer there. Yes, who didn't even get out of Q2. <laughs> yeah. So I think what they need to do is that all the other teams need to pitch in and make all the other tracks bumpy. Like just make tracks bumpy again. <laughs> a bit like the greatest a bit like the great escape, just when they're doing the track walk, just like just be jigging their trousers and have a load of gravel fall out. <laughs> Off road sections. Yeah. No, I'm I'm all I'm all I mean I don't want to get my hopes up, but that is now two races in a row where You've got your <laughs> hopes McLaren up. have been very good. And my hopes are well and truly up, yes. McLaren won the last race. They almost won this race, despite it not all going their way. Red Bull seem to be losing their grip on excellence, bit by bit by bit by bit. Ever since I'm Sausage not- Gate, isn't it? Yeah, it's just weird. I mean, <laughs> we might have to wait because Monaco is always a bit random and shite anyway. But mm, like, yeah. whatever the race after Monaco is could be interesting. But uh, I do, yeah. I mean, it, it is interesting. I mean, this is where my favorite, one of my favorite things of Formula One is about the people as opposed to the cars and the technology. I don't care about the racing <laughs> because the the, the the Red Bull still got the best car, whatever, whatever. But they've got such turmoil with all the stuff going on with Newey, and Mercedes have got this thing where they just don't know what the fuck's going on. They don't, they don't know what they're doing wrong. So they can't the do anything leaving, about it. It would seem. Yeah, everyone's leaving, including the driver. The morale must be really low, you know. And George Russell's like, "This is my chance to lead the team," and everyone's like, "Oh, fuck off." <laughs> Not now, George. George. (laughs) (laughs) You know that's how they talk to him. (laughs) Well, my pass isn't working again. Can someone reset my password? (laughs) I am. I am like the lead driver. Oh, mate. Yes, George, you're the lead driver. (laughs) Until the fourteen-year-old joins. (laughs) All hail the (laughs) fourteen-year-old. Yeah. Look, I'm, I'm, if not optimistic for a good season, I'm, it, not that long ago, it didn't feel like a McLaren would win a race, a Ferrari would win a race, and the Red Bulls would be challenged at like, the six races of the season. Start yeah, this cool. season, we thought yeah. it was going to be even more dominant than last year, didn't we? Yeah. So, so this is good. This is yeah. the, the, just, however, though, because you know Perez coming in eighth. This is. Just showing, isn't it? I mean, you tell me that uh, how good Max Verstappen really is. I mean, oh, totally. exactly, yeah. exactly oh, the same he, car. I mean, Perez just couldn't. Just it, couldn't I think do it, I do think it. if it wasn't Verstappen in that car, if it was just like a another good driver, oh, like it used to be on the credit cards, I think it would probably be the closest season we've had for fucking years. I, well, I, I don't think Red Bull would be doing anywhere near as well as they're doing without him. You know, for for all we we you know have a go at him for being a douche. He's he fucking is. brilliant. He's really, really good. And it seems like that his excellence and also apparently an absolutely monster stint in the simulator overnight during the oh, weekend by Sebastian Buemi. So no, this is not this is not Verstappen doing his 24-hour race on iRacing. This is Sebastian Buemi, ex-Toro Rosso, now WEC champion, all that kind of stuff. He was apparently in the simulator at Red Bull's factory crunching as many possible setups as possible overnight to try and figure out why the car wasn't working all through practice because the car was shit in practice they didn't top any of the time sheets they were way down and then they just about pulled it out in qualifying i don't think that should be allowed apart from the fact it's a bit like yeah in general he's in the rules i think i think there are so many ex toro rosso drivers that every team has one now but like i know it's a bit like the the apollo 13 film based on real life events where you know they try and recreate the problem at base and then they're like oh tom hanks you just gotta tie this i can't i've only said it once <laughs> tie this charcoal filter to this child so whatever they've they got do. this bas- they've got this basketball called wilson <laughs> <laughs> and you gotta play on this giant keyboard on the ground yeah that's all yeah. i know i remember all you gotta do is you know fly to the moon it's like a box of chocolates they fly yeah exactly yeah but i do think full one would be better for us the fans if they get to the track, and I've said it a lot of times, just cut all the fucking data. They, 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 you've got to the track, you've got a shit car on a Friday. Tough shit, mate. That's, how, that's life, you know. If life gives you lemons, <laughs> you don't get Jerome Ambrosia. Oh, no, is it? No, who was it? The other one. Sebastian Buemi. Sebastian Buemi. You don't get Scott's... If life gives you lemons, you don't get Scott Speed to Google some fucking recipes <laughs> while you're sleeping, do you? <laughs> oh, I left the freezer open. Get, get Christian Clean on the line. <laughs> Uh, I mean, you know, it, it, it gives me hope that they're struggling. Or they well, appear to be struggling, even though they're still winning. And for Perez, 
I mean, uh, is he is he got a seat at Red Bull next year? He hasn't signed I with them, has he? I don't no, think no, anybody's got. I think they're just going to have Verstappen. <laughs> do you think Perez? Do you, do you reckon, look, he's, he's, he's doing a remarkably similar career path to Bottas, isn't he? Which is just like every year he starts off quite well and it just dips off alarmingly. I think, you know that drivers have like personal trainers and nutritionists. I reckon they both had the same genie and they've gone, right, you've only got three wishes. He's like, oh, great. Just give me the first three races. What do you wish for? Uh, come second. I think he's going to hook up with the top female cyclist and start getting his ass out soon. McLaren. Lando needed two more laps to beat Verstappen. So it's a shame McLaren can't fucking count, isn't it? Piastri came home fourth, underlying this newfound orange car pace. The upgrades are working. Is McLaren on its way back to the top of the charts? Uh, signs are promising, I would say. Uh, again, I can't really tell this weekend because Monaco is just... What is even the point of Monaco? We'll talk more about what the point of Monaco isn't next week, but... Um... It does seem like they've, they've really getting the hang of it. And they do have two cracking drivers. Um, and and I think it's interesting because we, we'll talk about both these teams to come, but Aston Martin and Mercedes are both bringing updates that aren't working. So it's amazing that McLaren mm-hmm. are going, oh, yeah, I made it faster. Oh, I'm really clever. <laughs> yeah. Well, they did that well, last year as well, didn't they? Last season yeah. they did exactly the same. Their car got faster. Yes. Yeah, so I mean, like it could, really... couldn't have got much slower last season. That's yeah, well, that's, yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> But they're really understanding these rules. Uh, that's, and know, Mercedes that's, still aren't. <laughs> Mercedes them. still don't have a clue why their car doesn't work after like three years. Can I just oh. say Mercedes as well, got I, two- um, I, sorry, this is a completely you know, non-technical point, but I do enjoy Lando Norris's uh, radio chat. I, I was enjoying that. That was one of the better parts. It can got be a little good bit banter. spicy sometimes. Yeah, I liked it though. I th- I, he seems quite sort of... I don't know how you can seem that level-headed when you're racing at that speed. Huge yeah, amounts just, of marijuana. Just for just for the like he does, he? just for the listeners' sake, so I'm working today and I'm recording the podcast, and I just got a I just got a phone call while we were doing the podcast in German, and instead of being like a Formula One driver going, oh, so I can handle this, I can flick these switches, I can do these ten things at the same time, I just kind of froze and just stopped talking entirely. <laughs> <laughs> Not even saying to you two, oh, guys, I've just got to take this call. I'm just there going, if I just, st- I'm like a dinosaur. If I just stand still, maybe, <laughs> maybe no one will see me. <laughs> well, they, you know what they say about Germans, their vision is based on movement. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just, it's just one of those many things where, again, if I was a Formula One driver, for, for, for all of the reasons I wouldn't be very good at <laughs> being able to drive a Formula One car, this would be one of the many. <laughs> just they'd be there going, right, Terry, you need to um, you need to try and take a tighter line on turn six. And I could just be like, just go silent. Like, Terry, you're right. And I'm like, oh, I just need to pull over for a minute. Well. <laughs> you, just, you just stop the car at the side of the road and just sit there. Well, I just need like, a breather. If I, don't, if I don't move, nobody will ask oh, me anything. It's really hard. <laughs> you got any water? Terry, Terry, we can see you. There's TV cameras. We can see you. No, you can't. <laughs> Your radio's on. We can hear you breathing. Um, where are Which they in what, the? Uh, where, oh, sorry, go on. Uh, another joke. I felt like another joke was in, in come, incoming. No, it was just. This is what just happened. There. I was about to make the call back to my German colleague, and from my laptop, I just hear Ollie's voice going, "Uh, Terry, you know we can still hear you." <laughs> That's what I'd be like. I'd just be there going, oh, f- my fucking team are fucking shit. I fucking hate them all. Uh, Terry. <laughs> uh, anyway. No, where, where are McLaren in the, in the constructors? Because uh, really? they must be doing all right. Hi. Are they, are they second? Well, we, don't do the, we don't do the standings anymore, so I've completely don't, lost don't track of who's where. Don't tell people we don't do the standings. Oh, they're not I mean, they, they, they won't care. Uh, they're not. Ferrari is second. McLaren are actually still some way off them. Um, they are about, give or take, 60 points behind them. So, But having said that, Ferrari have been fairly consistently decent. Um, whereas I seem to remember McLaren had a couple of rubbish weekends at the start. So, uh, But it's bo- bo- boding well? Ba- ba- biding well? Joe, Joe Biden's Biden. well. It's <laughs> <laughs> looking well. Yeah. Is he? <laughs> Ferrari. The Ferraris are doing fine, just not great. Carlos Sainz has a moustache and Charles Leclerc has a new race engineer. What do they need to do? I don't actually know what 
didn't quite work this weekend. Has anyone listened to more coverage than I have? Um, yeah, I just... I, I, like they had upgrades, didn't they? And they, they were making a relatively big deal about their upgrades, saying this is these are going to be the ones. And I they certainly in, didn't not work, but... Yeah, I know. I think they're just in that classic thing of everything they're doing is working. It's just that McLaren are doing everything a little bit better. So take McLaren out of the picture, they're easy second to catching out a Red Bull, but they weren't anticipating McLaren to do so well, which is basically how competition works, I guess. <laughs> But I, I, want to, I want to have a moment just to say... Oh, here we go. ...that this is actually a surprise for Ferrari because <sighs> probably because Lewis Hamilton's going there next year and I'm just like, can you guys sort your shit out? But their radio clangers and strategy clangers have really dropped off since Freddie Vassily started. Yeah, it's a bit boring, isn't it? And I don't know what he does because it, he, he hasn't come in and fired everybody, but he's come in and they're just doing less fuck-ups, which really just begs the question of what was going wrong before yeah. is it just just coming in it's like oh, why don't you try doing it well oh <laughs> <Didn't>, <laughs> I bet uh, you know, I know, it's not every but it's not easy for everyone but <laughs> if you try doing it not really badly then maybe we'll do better it's going to be one of those like things from a, a, a sort of self-help book where it's just like it's just the little things just the little things. <laughs> Does he like, just put motivational like, messages up everywhere? Well, or just like they, they do monitor their fridge temperatures now. It will be the things that they're supposed to do that they don't. Like they always go for the big picture stuff. We need to make a really big, fast red, red car. And instead <laughs> they, they forget all the other stuff like sweeping the floor or putting the screws away in the right thing, in the right tub. But now they've got all of that sorted. So it's like, where's the fucking screw? What's in the tub? Because we've we've. How am I supposed to up. find it there? Do you reckon it was like? Do you remember That's the TV show Black Books? Do you reckon it was like? <laughs> do you reckon it basically used to be run by Bernard Black from Black Books? Yeah, yeah. And they've just tidied it all up, and now everything just kind of works. All the simple stuff works. They've had a manny come in. So they this is going to be no, nothing I, to people who haven't seen Black Books, but no, it means nothing to them. I think he said what's happened is he said, "Look, I'm not going to change anything. I'm not going to change a single thing. I'm just going to change one thing." Which is we drink after the race. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. After the race, we have a drink. Simple but effective. Yeah. Mm. I mean, keep doing it. You know, they're they're on a good. It's not been as spectacular an upward trajectory as McLaren, but it has been an upward tra- trajectory. And bearing in mind Ferrari's recent history, um, that's good. Long may they keep it up. You know, until they get too big for their boots again, in which case maybe they fuck it up again and keep everyone happy. Mercedes. Mercedes are in no man's land with updates that at best do nothing. This is Lewis Hamilton's worst start to a season ever and George Russell's best, probably. Uh, Can they do anything about fixing this car? It's not looking hopeful, is it? I mean, Hamilton doesn't care. He's off. He's just like, ah, I'm writing off this season. Do you think so? He's on Duolingo all the time. He doesn't give a shit. (laughs) (laughs) Because he said the other day, they said, who should replace you? And he said... Kimi Morbidelli, Antonelli, whatever his name is. And I think that's just because he wants someone to practice Italian with. <laughs> Did he say it with a sort of Antonelli, like that? Are we yeah. going to see through the season he's just getting more and more bits of Italian into every interview? And more dry. He just, he just starts drinking. <laughs> Dressing increasingly stylishly. Riding a Vespa. <laughs> Smoking small cigarettes. Drinking Aperol Spritz. <laughs> yeah, lots of hand signals. Just demands olives everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Keeps yeah. asking people what the matter is with them. <laughs> any more? Tells people they don't have any respect. Mussolini. <laughs> <laughs> Starts getting the trains running on time. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Want to say anything on George? No. 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 Aston Martin. In a stunning role reversal of the usual order, Lance Stroll got a lowly points finish and Alonso tried to get Lawrence Stroll to tell him he's proud. Uh, the Aston Martin team have added some new updates, but they are shit. Uh, what does the team do in this situation? This? What, what was going on with Alonso this weekend? Yeah, he was know. drunk, wasn't he? He's absolutely <laughs> all over the shop. <laughs> this is the worst I can remember driving in years. It's like he's like he's got some friends in town for a stag do, and he's like, I just have one, and I've got to do a race. If Max Verstappen could do a fucking sim race, I can have a beer with my best friend of thirty years, Flavio Briatore, or whatever. And then he turns out, and to then the he race. nearly crashed into a wall. So maybe it was Flavio the whole time. <laughs> 
Did they make changes to the car? Did they have some upgrades? Probably. They did. So they had they had a big upgrade package, which just obviously was wrong. <laughs> and I think it's a fascinating question because what do you... Because obviously one one thing to do is you just say, all right, we'll take the updates off and we'll go back to the last car. But everything is in such a process of you know development that if something really clangily doesn't work like that, what do you do? What do you do? Isn't it try, like try reloading and, old software? Phase- like well, if maybe, you upload the that, point one version, you're like, oh, it's just crashed. I'm just going to Yeah, upload. but they'll have loads of different software and they'll <laughs> have a package of other software coming yeah. that's reliant on having, you know, yeah. Python version 7. <laughs> but it's like, oh, we've taken it back to 5s and now nothing else will work. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. This is why it does feel it's quite same. difficult, isn't it? Well, it is the same with Mercedes, isn't it? Because I think from an outsider, from a fan perspective... It feels quite easy. You're just like, yeah, just make the car faster, yeah, you just a bit get by the bit every week. Yeah, and because they always, and upgrades is this like nebulous term where you're just like, oh, they've got some upgrades. You're like, oh, it's, it's like in the, it's like in the F1 game where you just go research upgrade, upgrade and then in the <laughs> race time the, the upgrade's ready, put on upgrade. Oh, it's worked, brilliant. <laughs> and then so when it doesn't work, it must just be like, oh, I don't know, what do we do? It should Call work. it a downgrade. <laughs> so you can just rename it. You yeah, know, it's all about this. perspective. Yeah, we've got a big downgrade package this year. We're hoping to be at least five seconds off the pace by, by yeah. the second half. We're just yeah. trying some new bits, but the fuel efficiency is fantastic. Yeah. We want yeah. to be last. We've got it. In 100 races, we're going to be last. But we'll have a, um, a full tank left. Like we're trying to, <laughs> They're doing their bit for the environment. It does. They're not starting, obviously, from such a high place as Mercedes, but I... I don't know, but it seems like they're just trying a few things and they're not quite working, whereas Mercedes genuinely don't have a clue how their car works and why it's not working. Um, they seem like they're just flailing around in the dark, whereas Aston Martin, I don't know. And also, you know, Mercedes have got better drivers, whereas Aston Martin have got one good driver who this week couldn't do it, and the son of the boss, who, you know, was all right this weekend, I think, wasn't he? Yeah, I wasn't really watching him, to be he honest. He didn't do anything terrible. He did do a couple of nice overtakes. He got he points. I mean, time. that's something. Yeah, you know, he got, got two. Where did he points. start? I can't remember. He started at the. He was on the grid. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Good. That's the answer we needed. Well, Alonso started from the pit lane, so actually that was pretty accurate. <laughs> well, he was going to start at last anyway because he fucked up. Actually, no, the sergeant was last, wasn't he? Or was he? Oh, One no. of them two was last. In but the, way, the, the fact that we're talking about the differences between Fernando Alonso and Logan Sargent shows you how bad a weekend it was for Alonso. Mm. Stinker. And the also rants. RB, the Daniel Ricciardo farewell tour continues apace with a blitzing 13th place finish, whereas Sonoda actually did fucking well. Go him. That is the something race in a row where Tsunoda's actually been all right. And maybe we don't give him enough praise because we kicked him when he was down, which is mm. what we do. But he has actually been all right for a few races. He's never going to be spectacular in an RB, but he got points again. Comprehensively just, spanked Ricardo again, although that seems like that's not that difficult these days. I know he has anger issues, and I know that he's his own character, but why why isn't he in serious talks for, for being Perez's replacement? Consistency, I think. Like He's been good oh, the last what? few races, but then he's had you a couple Perez, of years. You mean Perez, he just went over the gravel and finished ninth in the best car that's no, ever no, been no, made ever. I, I'm absolutely with you on that. But when if, you, if you've got an inconsistent rubbish driver, you don't want to replace him with another inconsistent, mediocre driver. Um, and although Sonoda has been good in the last few races, over the course of his F1 career, I don't think he has been particularly brilliant. Um, so I think that's probably why he's not been in the conversation. But I mean, maybe he is behind the scenes now. I don't know. But then when you look at like what uh, percentage races to good results, okay, it's a, a smaller number of totals. When you look at Liam Lawson and you look at whoever else we were talking about, who was the other person in the frame? I can't forget. I can't forgotten now. No, no there was somebody yeah. else, wasn't there? Ricardo. No, not Ricardo. Somebody good. Albon. Sure, there was somebody else. Who no, did you say, the, Liam Lawson? The, yeah. Uh, I can't remember. This is the quick fire bit, isn't it? I don't know. Anyway, yeah, uh, (laughs) fine. Alpine. Alpine are really getting the hang of 2023. Shame it's 2024. Didn't see them. Don't remember anything about them. Did anything happen with them? Not really. They just pooled around, you know, like you do. Out of the points. Ah. 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 Ah.
Magnussen drove so carefully all weekend after complaining that his penalties for cheating are too harsh. Hulkenberg is clearly getting all cocky with his Audi deal and is doing quite well. He is, and we didn't have time to talk about it last weekend. Should we talk about it quickly now? Go on. Hulkenberg to Audi, confirmed, signed, done, Bosch, first Audi driver, a German driver, German team, based in Switzerland, but still. Like me. Yeah, you're a German driver for a German team based in Switzerland. Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs> um, I mean, no one says it's that. Just, no one says Auf Wiedersehen. And if you say pet, no one knows you what you're talking about. Tschüss, or is that a southern thing? <laughs> I don't know. What do they say? How do they say bye in Berlin? Tschüss. Oh, it is tschüss, okay. I thought that might Ciao. just be a southern. Or Ciao. often, people just say goodbye. Layers. <laughs> <laughs> layers. Yeah. Or layers, bruv, yeah. <laughs> what tidy um, yeah I mean <laughs> Hulkenberg Berlin not fucking Bromley Jesus Christ they all speaking it might as well be <laughs> alright lads 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 um, that is Bromley no that was Berlin uh, Hulkenberg <laughs> to Audi. the refreshing thing about living in Berlin there's less posh British people there's quite a few British oh, people sounds awful not, there's not that many poshos there's no poshos oh, do they it. not sell chinos people think I'm posh <laughs> <laughs> You do I do call myself that. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Terry. There he goes by Terencio over there. Terencio. <laughs> um, He's not British. Uh, that was, that's um, his surname. He's, he's married into... I don't know where I'm going with this. Um, Hulkenberg. Signed a deal. Audi. Hulkenberg. And it's supposed to be the quick fire section. Yes. Hurry up. Hulkenberg to Audi. I think, actually, it's not we spectacular. Time. It's a yeah. good... It's a decent signing. He knows loads of stuff. He's not good enough, but that's... Fu- he's not good enough to be a top driver, but that's fine because they're not going to be a top team to start with. He'll teach them a load of stuff. He'll be fine. Well done. Great. Salba. So Bottas is pissed that the team is set to drop him. And he was seen in the Williams garage, but never in his car during the race. I forgot to mention this. Uh, Bottas to Williams, maybe? Kind of makes sense. Back to where it all began. Hmm. I think. I mean, but... Do you... I, where else are you going to go? I feel like... I mean, obviously, and again, many reasons why I'm not a Formula 1 driver, but if I was in Bottas' career position, I just give, I'd want to give up rather than go back to Williams. I'd, is driving a Formula 1 car that special? I mean, I'd oh, love yeah, to drive be, a Formula 1 car. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I would much rather be, like, if somebody gave me the choice, yeah, just the worst driver. I'd be so, Logan Sargent. I'd happily do that. I'll be that guy. I'd accept I'd millions right. of pounds to drive around at the back. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. I'm, I'm, I'm stupid, of course. I'll I, do it for I, 100k. I'd like, I'd like nothing better than to phone in a Grand Prix season. <laughs> <laughs> be amazing. In a number so, of ways, shit F1 drivers are your heroes. Yeah. I mean, it's what I aspire to be. Just someone who does the minimum effort <laughs> yeah. and gets the minimum result. <laughs> <laughs> and that's could, what I can the, bring all, to this team. All the reserve drivers, you can just turn up. <laughs> yeah, but they don't get to drive to it that much. They do all the boring bit and they don't get the fun bit of driving don't it. They, they, they get, get to, to do one FP1 a year or something. Oh, right. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, or I'll they get I'd to spend drive. 11 hours overnight in a sim rig. <laughs> if we were the kind of podcast that does features, I'd like to, it, like, to go to, embed myself in a team Mm. and work out which position in the entire team does the least work. <laughs> <laughs> the PR department will love that feature. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just be yeah. like, oh, it's if you wanted the PR to slack in the Formula it? 1 team, where would you go? I mean, it would be oh. a really good challenge to see how far into an F1 team you could get. Uh, it's well, it's like, a sort of a, like, a, like an investigative reporter. Yeah, absolutely. Like when like you're sort of exposing far... people abusing chickens in a slaughterhouse. Or you could, could you get to the point where you update the spreadsheets at Williams like could you like what would be the job that you could get well not Williams because he might accidentally he might accidentally end up quite senior there but yeah. <laughs> I started Speak- this as a joke and now I'm deputy team principal and I don't know how to get out of it yeah yeah speaking of which Williams Williams are losing half a second a lap due to being overweight but Logan Sargent pointed out the car won't go at all if he's not in it which will be proved wrong later this season <laughs> <laughs> um Right. First of all, I know how they feel because <laughs> I think I lose a lot of seconds due to being overweight, so mm. I can sympathise. Um, but I'm not made out of carbon fibre, so what's their excuse? Oh, it seems. <laughs> no, right. no. Adrian, Adrian knew he hasn't had his had his way with me yet, so to speak. I have been in a kiln. Oh, okay. That not when it was on though. Right. Oh, okay. Um, I. What well, were they actually, playing before... at that they haven't got the car down to weight? That seems like a well, fairly basic thing. Well. My state of F1 is about to be about this very subject. That's why I'm not going to talk about it anymore. Well, we'll have to look forward to The point to is, that. Logan Sargent is still terrible. Bless him. And now it's time for the state of F1 with Terry Saunders. 
Williams are shit. This is nothing new. But now it appears that Williams aren't shit, but are shit. Alexander Albon has signed for ages, and yet they're shit. What gives? Well, it's back to my favourite F1 revelation in recent years, the Williams XL spreadsheet. <laughs> so apparently, this year's car is more consistent, meaning they don't have the erratic peaks of previous years where some circuits would work well for them, and the rest of them, they just showed up because they had to. So far, so good. But now it transpires that the car is some 15 kilograms overweight, which is losing maybe half a second a lap. Why? Well, James Val said that they managed to strip a whopping 14 kilograms from the <laughs> chassis by making it... I don't know, thinner or lighter or something. But then, because they ran out of time and everything is in such a mess because they organised the entire operation with a fucking Excel spreadsheet, they ended up adding loads of heavy bits because that was all they had. <laughs> <laughs> and after years of being down on Williams, I just want to stand up and applaud and say, finally, I can fucking relate. <laughs> don't worry, I have a solution. Every project I do starts with the best intentions. I make a little spreadsheet, I'll buy a new notebook, I'll tape up areas I'm going to paint, I'll put some newspaper down, I'll clear my hard drive, I'll tidy my apartment and I'm ready to go. But as the deadline inevitably <laughs> approaches, I find myself getting less and less organised and more and more frantic. The idiom of measure twice, cut once becomes cut now and then swear at yourself for being so fucking stupid. Paint drips manage to find every uncovered spot of carpet and I manage to super glue my hands together even though I'm using Photoshop. So what I'm trying to say is that if you <laughs> Come to Williams. I'm your fucking man. Fucking Excel. <laughs> yeah, I'd I'd love to I'd love to see behind the scenes at Williams, and I'd love to see some of the conversations with the the guys that came in when they bought it and they realised what they had. And I mean, they're just it's, being shown round. It's the the thing about Williams is that it feels like. I know it is a proper Formula 1 team with a budget and everything, but it kind of feels like it's run by sitcom characters. <laughs> you can imagine David Jason and Roddy Barker <laughs> being in control with Nicholas Lindhurst as well, and, you know, Richard Bryars is doing... And the guys <laughs> from doing uh, the aerodynamics. Last of the Summer Wine. <laughs> yeah, the marketing department is Terry and June. <laughs> <laughs> the wind tunnel just has a bath for three old blokes in it. <laughs> makes sense doesn't it I think that's right. I, I, years ago I, got, I actually got to go to Williams but not to the I didn't see the F1 bit I was going to the advanced engineering and I got a chance to have a look at the Williams Heritage department where they fix up all the old cars and stuff and it was just full of old guys you know who'd been there for years fixing you know Alan Jones's car from 1980 or whatever it was and I now wonder if actually maybe I did see the F1 bit and that was the actual real, <laughs> that was the actual real floor where they did the modern cars I'm not sure well, on that note, that's it from us. We'll be back even before there's more racing with another of Phil Troman's race previews. And we'll be answering your questions in Listener's Corner. Until then, it's goodbye to Phil Troman's. Goodbye. We haven't had time to talk about the fact that there might be a race in Thailand. Maybe. Street race. Meh. And to Terry Saunders. You fucking b- Look, look, look what I wrote. I wrote yeah. Bangkok in this bit. Do you, just because you, you go first. Look, do you want to, you do you want to go that? back into the history of the talk and see which one was written in there first, Terry? Yes, I fucking do. <laughs> right, I'm sorry, Ollie. I know you've got to go and see your families on the beach, but I want to check this because I definitely wrote this before you do. How do you, how do you check history? Hang on, go in there now. <laughs> Thank you. I will wait. I'm just going and uh, it looks like I wrote it first. What time? Hang on. This is great. And then right. <laughs> Andrews. Sorry, I really thought this would be quicker, Ronnie. Really. I thought it was like a one click thing. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, actually, as it turns out, uh, Terry wrote it first. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> In the meantime, check out our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash for F1's sake, and follow us on Twitter at for F1's sake. Oh, and check out our YouTube channel where you can see as well as hear us. If you're watching on YouTube already, here's something just for you. <laughs> <laughs> However, uh, if you want to watch or listen, just type in for F1's sake to something and see what comes up. Terry, where can people buy merchandise? FF1S.com slash shop shop shop. It's weird we don't get that many sales, isn't it? I can't understand why. So good the marketing's there. I have to spend a fortune on domain names, that's why. Thanks for listening. I've been Ollie Peer. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.